So America is suffering through a worldwide pandemic right now. The world is suffering through a worldwide pandemic. And uh, our restaurants, bars, event venues, any non-essential businesses have been told to shut their doors. There are shelter-in-place rules going up in city after city. There are stay-in mandates. They just announced last night, California is a stay-in mandate. Other states are soon going to follow suit. Essentially, everything's going to be locked down and the streets are going to be emptying out. <laughs> so what happens when you've been on the road for a year and a half, going gig to gig as a freelance entertainer? And you're told to self-quarantine in your home? If your self-quarantine house becomes your car. That's right. That's literally where I am now forced to live because I imagine apartment hunting and house shopping is terrible right now. So I will be going on the road. And I figure, look, let's make lemonade out of lemons. As everybody's stuck indoors and I'm stuck on the road, I figure I'll travel around America and see what it looks like when America shuts down. I should have got a bigger car. All right, this is crazy. This is the 405 South during rush hour at the 405-105 interchange. And if you've ever lived in LA, you know that this is just one of the most bananas interchanges, especially during rush hour. And this is uh, empty. I mean, other cities might look at it and be like, that's kind of busy. For LA, this is usually bumper to bumper. There's no way I'm going 70 miles an hour like I am. Uh, this is crazy, so this is what happens when everybody stays home from work, everybody. This is coronavirus traffic in Los Angeles. So this is Santa Monica Pier right here with the uh, Santa Monica Pacific Palisades Beach. Absolutely almost empty. A few random cars here and there. So we are uh, walking by the uh, Santa Monica Pier right here and the ramp leading down to it. Places are usually packed. Uh, this is a beautiful day out today. It's a Thursday. All you see is a handful of homeless people, some some cops and some security. And uh, one, like just a couple of sad random tourists that must have booked this tour months in advance and not knowing the ramifications because I saw a tour bus pull up and like eight people got off and they've just been walking around in circles because as you can see there's really nothing to see the ferris wheel has stopped there's no games all the restaurants are closed all the bars are closed and uh this is it's like a ghost town it's weird to see anybody walking around so this is what it looks like on the santa monica pier when uh in the santa monica beach and venice beach when uh it gets shut down by a virus so i'm gonna go down closer to the pier it's pretty fascinating also really eerie and sad I just walked from Santa Monica Pier, right down there in Santa Monica, all the way down, all the way down Venice Boardwalk, and I've I've never seen it so empty before. I mean, there's there's a handful of people out. You might be able to see some people behind me. It's a mix of the it's a mix of the people who live there and kind of their makeshift tent city. There's a couple of shops open, CBD and clothes. You can still buy those, and then a couple of uh, probably uh, 20 or 30 unfortunate tourists who just didn't realize how empty and bland it was going to be. Uh, and you, you, you really see the trickle down effect because there's buskers out there with their pianos and guitars and their tip jars out and there's artists who create there and paint on the beach and sell their paintings for five dollars, ten dollars. But no one's buying, no one's buying any of their stuff, the local artist stuff. And so you see the trickle down because there's not enough people there to buy the stuff. And I, I just think it's uh, it's, it's going to be more far-reaching than just the restaurants and bars closing. Muscle Beach is closed. The basketball courts are empty. The pickleball courts are empty. It's kind of crazy just to see a, a wide open, shut down Venice Beach. It looks like a developing country over there. And usually it's shoulder to shoulder, packed with tourists and locals and celebrities and uh, homeless. 
photos and artists. And now it's, uh, as you can see, it's a beautiful day that's ridiculously quiet out here. Uh, yeah, it's a little eerie. A little eerie. Kind of peaceful, but eerie. Get to go food here. Call up Jimmy's. Stay strong. And I miss dress. LA stopped charging for parking, so you could park wherever you wanted to, but they stopped charging for it, stopped giving tickets, stopped doing street cleaning just in case you were stuck inside. You didn't have to go out and move your car. And it looks like it's citywide because all these meters are out. So I guess there's some silver lining during a virus. If you want to park on the street, you can park wherever you want to without having to do the math on the ridiculous signs and without having to pay any money. <clears throat> eating some uh, dinner here in the car as I travel. Yeah, Hot boiled eggs right there. Those uh, those travel pretty good. Uh, I had to cook some up in Palm Springs, so uh, it's good. Protein, being healthy, <laughs> super healthy. <laughs> Here we go, this is Friday night on the Las Vegas Strip, which is always bumper to bumper, especially on a Friday, Ubers and taxis and vans and shuttles. And tonight, not even the signs are lit up. Mandalay Bay sign is dark. All the casinos and hotels are obviously closed. It's just crazy to see this amount of shutdown. All the lights are off with the Luxor. Lux is completely shut down. Wow. Absolutely dark at the Luxor. A couple of casinos are still kind of lit up, but nobody has the signs. Not all the, uh, the flash that you're used to normally seeing out here. All the distracting lights and pizzazz. Bit of a police presence still. sign lit up with nothing is more important to us than your safety. We look forward to welcoming you back soon so MGM is closed. Some still have the signs lit up. If they're on timers but they'll be walking around the streets with those yards of margaritas or beers tourists, no gamblers, no nothing. No one on the bridge crossing over. Wow, ghost town. Cosmopolitan and Aria, completely dark. You know what's crazy? There's no hotel lights on either. Like usually these things are lit up with hotel room lights. So those are all dark as well, so it makes it even more ominous. Well, top 
which is still out pulling people over. Well, that's good. Can't imagine for what. Paris, every hotel room dark on the Paris. Caesar's Palace, Bellagio is completely dark, dark. Bellagio is insane right now. Dark at the Bellagio, no crowd show, obviously. There we go, up down your left, you can see uh, the garage, and just before that, Caesar's Palace. <clears throat> all completely dark, Flamingo completely dark, you can put the signs on out front, barriers in front of all the hotels. All the casinos and hotels making sure you don't go in. You know, what's even crazier is this is March Madness weekend. This was supposed to be like the weekend in Vegas. It's supposed to be packed all weekend. That's like a lot of the casinos, the sports books, like the second biggest day of the year besides the Super Bowl and all that, all that down the drain. No one's here. No one's gambling. No one's staying in the hotels. No one's eating, drinking. They shut them all down a couple days ago mandatory, not mandatory, but a stay-in mandate going up around the uh, city, so this might be the last night to get these shots. Mirage has turned off their lights on the signs as well. A couple signs are still up, but what if they're on timers or what? Because I know none of the places are open. Maybe it's just positive thinking. Yeah, they got police at the front of all the casinos, so you don't, I guess, making sure you don't go in. Well, this is Friday prime time, like, this is 10 p.m. on a Friday. Usually this is just music and drinking and partying and fun. Not this weekend, Vegas. If you've never been here, this probably looks like a lot of lights to you. Like, this probably looks pretty extravagant and be sexy, but this isn't what it's normally like in Vegas. This is this is not the normal razzle dazzle electricity flowing out of every flat surface that you normally see on a Friday or a Monday. This is this is shocking. I've been to Vegas a hundred times in my life and I've never seen it this dark and quiet. The signs usually those signs right there see that white sign right there usually that's like you know whatever whoever's performing Barry Manilow or <laughs> whatever Donny Marie or Christina Aguilera they all have these uh, well wishes these big well wishes stay safe wishing you well well welcome you back This is uh, Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas, and as you can see, it's crazy. Complete ghost town. No lights on. A couple of searchlights for the security. They have gates set up everywhere, so you actually can't walk down this walking area. And I used to love this place because this whole roof used to light up all the way down. Neon and music playing, people walking back and forth, drinks in their hands, street performers. And as you can see right now, Nothing. This place should be packed on a Friday at 10. Packed. And now, absolutely dead. There ain't any lights on. It's crazy, man. I've never seen it. It's like someone just flipped a switch and was like, Vegas is done for the, for the week, for the month, for the two months.
All right, so you're probably wondering how I get around the country in just a small little Ford Fiesta. So uh, let me uh, let me give you a tour of, uh, of the house, of the, the self-quarantine mobile. That's what it's called. It's a self-quarantine mobile. Should have bought a van when I had a chance. So we got the uh, the front seat right here. This is uh, this is what I call my kitchen and kind of work area. You got the backpack with all the writing in it and reading and uh, cables and stuff. Front seat, you got headphones so you can talk when you drive. This is my kitchen right here with all the food necessary items and my toiletries. And uh, I got some uh, games down there and uh, fabric softener and uh, it's my laundry, my laundry basket right there. So that's the front seat. Back seat right here. This is my hanging closet right here. There's the backpack in case I need to travel. This is my hanging closet right here. All the hang up button up clothes and then uh, my full laundry room back there. So you got the detergents and you got your Febreze and everything. That's the laundry room area. And then in the trunk area you have this bag which is pants and t-shirts right there. This bag which is socks, underwear, uh, some workout clothes, accessories, scarves, uh, thick socks in case I need them in case it gets cold. Under all that, that's my shoe rack right there. So we got shoes at the very bottom, extra garbage bags. Uh, we got an extra bottle of water down there. And then all the way in the back of the trunk there, it's kind of dusty. You got the tent, sleeping bag, and cot in case I need to sleep on the road. And uh, you got the computer accessories back there. So this is kind of a, the, the closet slash storage area. And then the uh, other side of the car, you have, uh, well, you got the office, the office area. This is uh, envelopes, staplers, uh, microphone, things like that to do voiceover on the road. Uh, and there's my jacket area, jacket, uh, extra pair of shoes in case it rains, and then my workout bag in case the gyms ever open up again. So that's the other side of the back seat. There's the hanging area. And then uh, back there, the back there, that's my hat rack right there. That's a hat rack. Of course, front seat right there. It's a continuation of the kitchen. And you see my lunch right there. That is gonna be uh, eggs for lunch. As you can see, uh, my car has survived two different trips to Burning Man. So if it could survive that, then uh, it could survive pretty much anything. So there you go. That's the, that's the self-quarantine mobile with the warm cup of coffee on top. And the driver's side seat tilts back far enough in case I ever need to sleep in my car. I can sleep super comfortably. You know, it's interesting. It's rare to see any cars actually on the interstates right now. It's just like a handful. It's mostly just interstate truckers, deliveries, that sort of thing. Usually there's probably two cars for every truck when you're driving through Arizona. But right now, as you can see, uh, since most people are staying in and self-quarantining and sheltering in place, Pretty much just the truck drivers out here who obviously still have deliveries to make. Probably just trucks full of toilet paper and hand sanitizer, I'd imagine. Like a ghost town. So many cars with no people. What's funny is watching those shows, like the ATV and Night Rider and shit like that, they're so bad, man. Oh, they're terrible. This is small town Texas right here. Small town, shut down, mainstream. This is crazy, there's like no one out here. Look at that, the gas station is completely empty. I mean, it is a ghost town. I'm just kidding, it's, it's West Texas.
So we took a little pit stop in at the Fort Worth area. That was Fort Worth, but this is uh, Fort Worth. Sundance Square, usually bustling, usually one of the busier places in Fort Worth. And as you can see, uh, a couple of people walking around, but nothing crazy. The one thing that strikes me the most is, every time you see the Starbucks, you think Starbucks would be the last holdout. Like if there's any money to be made, Starbucks would be the one that stays open. But every time you see a Starbucks that's closed, uh, you see one that's got a yeah, temporary closed sign on it. It's always kind of creepy when the big stores who can afford to stay open are closed. Uh, there are some drive throughs for Starbucks that are open, but this is the big square. People are making do with what they got. There's a restaurant down the way. Over here, it's called Simply Fondue. They're actually selling their raw materials because it's a fondue place. They're selling their raw materials on the street. So you can go buy, pick up potatoes, vegetables, meats, take them home and cook them. And if you do that, they'll also sell you a bottle of wine. You can't just go in there and buy a bottle of wine. I checked, but they have the wine out there on the table and uh, they're doing uh, raw food orders because they have food orders and they got to make money. So those are the independent restaurants, but it's crazy. I went to the stockyards as well, absolutely quiet. There's maybe two or three restaurants that are doing curbside. You know, there's a couple of curbside restaurants, but yeah, for the most part, there's a, a new, uh, there's a shelter in place here in Texas as well. And they actually said they're pulling people over who aren't sheltering in place. I mean, I'm driving around in my car. That's my that's my in place. So maybe I get by on a technicality, but uh, there are a ton of cops around. So I don't want to stay here too long because there are actually tons of cops patrolling around, just kind of eyeballing. So uh, I think they're taking it pretty pretty sincerely here in Texas. Just had a bunch of new cases. So uh, this is uh, Fort Worth, untouched for the most part by people. And there is uh, Starbucks. When Starbucks closes, you know this stuff is serious. So here we are on uh, Interstate 30, coming up on 820, uh, here between Fort Worth and Dallas at 525 p.m., a rush hour on a Wednesday. And you can see a lot of people taking that uh, new shelter-in-place mandate to heart. Uh, there are a lot of cops on the freeway, so I don't want to film too long. I just want to show you how loose the traffic is right now. Uh, usually pretty stacked. I've been stuck between Fort Worth and Dallas during rush hour, and this could be pretty packed. So uh, a lot of people taking that in place. Uh, I was going to stay at a buddy's house tonight, but then he told his wife and she freaked out about the virus. So I'm not going to stay at their house just because I've been traveling and they don't want to invite, uh, they don't want to open their doors to the outside world and let a potential virus carrier in with their kids, <laughs> which is understandable, but uh, that is the uh, first official closed door on me. Here we go. Let's make our way across the U.S. Keep them going. Great traffic, though. Making good time. Oh, you guys. I was told by a friend, I'm in uh, Louisiana right now. I was told by a friend after we had lunch in Lafayette at his restaurant to avoid driving the direct route through Baton Rouge to get to New Orleans because there's always traffic there. It's always backed up. If there's a fender bender, it gets worse, but there's always traffic. So take the southern route or northern route. It's probably 20 minutes extra. And I thought, I'm not in a big rush. The whole idea is to see what America looks like when it's all kind of shut down. If there's traffic, great. That would be interesting. If there was no traffic, well, uh, it's even better. It's a lot faster. So this is the road from Lafayette to Baton Rouge to New Orleans. When there's a pandemic in America, as you can see, flowing nicely, chopping along at nice 65 miles per hour. So here we are on uh, Bourbon Street in Louisiana and probably one of the biggest party streets in the world. And as you can see, 
I'm walking in the middle of it in the middle of the day. Usually these balconies are packed with people drinking, the restaurants and bars are open, there's tons of music, and I think the craziest thing is the absolute quiet that you hear. I mean, I hear birds chirping, I hear a plane overhead. You could never hear that on a normal day on Bourbon Street. But everybody's gone home, there's a few, uh, a few homeless people walking around. There's a couple, there's like two or three restaurants open doing to-go orders, but otherwise, this is Bourbon Street shut down during a pandemic. It's the quiet that's crazy around here. If you've ever been here before, you just know there's street musicians everywhere. And that's what gets me the most about this. Like, I almost feel like I want to whisper. It's absolutely bananas how empty this place is. Mm. Coronavirus has shut down Bourbon Street. So just spend a little time on uh, on Bourbon Street, and uh, I'm gonna be honest, I, I had to leave. It's just too it's too eerie. It feels I don't know, like a like a funeral or a wake of some sort. Uh, I mean, I, New Orleans has taken the the shelter in place seriously. They just had a bunch of cases pop up, and it's, apparently it's spreading like crazy. So that's why you don't see that many people out, which is great. But when you see one of the most fun streets in the U.S., if not the world, just completely quiet, it's I don't know, it's, it's it kind of making my skin crawl, like it feels a little bit uneasy. To, so uh, I'm gonna take off out of here. It seems, um, I don't know, it's just the eerie silence and quiet is a little unnerving. So goodbye, New Orleans, good luck. Atlanta, Georgia is probably one of the worst traffic cities in the U.S. next to Los Angeles, Houston, uh, New York, and when the coronavirus or worldwide pandemic sweeps through, traffic is significantly thinned out. So, this is probably the emptiest I've ever seen this freeway. I've been on it a few times. And you could really just go where you want to. We're gonna head south down to Savannah, but I want to just give a shot of what traffic looks like heading south of downtown Atlanta. If you need to go run some errands, even though you probably shouldn't be. It's, uh, it's not a bad day to drive. Too bad it took a pandemic to make these freeways do what they're meant to do. So one thing we need to do is let's uh, let's just address the elephant in the room, the, the safety issue of doing this. I know it's going to come up and people have already texted me about it. Uh, I am doing this uh, as safely as possible with all following all the WHO and CDC recommendations. As I said, they told to self-quarantine and where you live, and so that's my car on the road. But I'm in my car 90% of the time, having little to no human interaction when I do. I'm always maintaining six feet of distance apart. I've talked to maybe three people places I've gone to. Everything else, as you can see from the videos, are completely empty. I'm washing my hands as soon as I pull over for gas. I pump the gas with a, a, a napkin around the handle and then go back and wash my hands again. If I eat, I'm always eating either at the gas station or I go to, and I recommend this, some, if there's like a local curbside pickup wherever I am, I'll eat there.
there. I do that, but if I do that, I'll always wash my hands before, wash my hands after. Gargling salt water every day, making hot liquids constantly, uh, coffee and uh, just hot water. I don't have any symptoms. Hey man, uh, uh, talked to in the past two, two and a half, three weeks, doesn't have any symptoms. I'm keeping interaction down to a minimum and keeping touching down to a minimum, keeping washing to a maximum. I am doing this as healthy as possible. I want to let everybody know that so they don't think I'm some kind of traveling virus infected spider monkey leaving a trail of infection in my wake. This isn't reckless, this is what I want to say. This project is I'm able to be on the road and I'm stuck on the road and so I want to bring the road to everybody else who's not on the road and show everybody what it's like out there and ultimately to show how people are coming together. So here we are on the river walk in downtown Savannah, usually a place teeming with tourists and locals and as you can see, like everywhere else, we've stopped. Absolutely nothing. Just empty shops, empty bars, empty restaurants, empty river walk, empty steamship next to me, which is just resting in the river, providing a kind of an ominous soundtrack right now. So I apologize for that. Uh. <laughs> it is kind of creepy. And just, uh, just two observations. It's interesting, so I'm taking pictures of a lot of the signs on the doors because they're all different. Either the signs are just these form letters, like due to the coronavirus outbreak, uh, you know, we're temporarily closed and some are actually legitimately heartfelt like we apologize for the safety of our staff and You know handwritten out which I think is interesting that the different shops and different restaurants and bars have kind of a different way For handling the situation Terry Kay from Galway, the double in town. Now they'd have seen that the sweet coming that I met in the county down. Near about Bridgetown in the county down on a morning last July. When a boring green got a sweet colleen, she smiled as she passed me by. She looked so sweet from her two bare feet to the sheen of her nut brown hair. A coaxing elf, I shook myself for the sea where she really there. From Bentley to Terry Kay from Galway, the double in town. I may not have seen the sweet coming I met in the empty down down. Right now we're in uh, the Five Points area of East Nashville, and I wanted to. There's a tornado that ripped through here March 3rd, and 27 dead, all sorts of destruction. I mean, you just gotta think: how does the community recover like that when you have a huge tornado on March March 3rd, and then the virus shut down? And of course, on top of all that, it's raining today. It's uh. Oh, it just shows you the resiliency, I guess, of a, of a community. You got to deal with the one thing, and then all of a sudden, that's a massive physical destruction. Then you have the massive shutdown. And you know, here's the positive spin. It always bounces back, right? So it just takes time. I mean, it's, it's fucking disheartening to see, but then I guess the silver lining is... It's never 
no community seems ever really shut down in the in the states which is good so you got to believe that this is all going to get better eventually and time heals all wounds and all those other cliches but uh yeah it's have to deal with a tornado and then then the shutdown of a pandemic it's fucking mind-numbing I mean, i've never seen tornado destruction live before and i think it's something you you know you see it on the news and there's such a disconnect but when you see it up close it's just it just fucking lays you out uh but like I said, the positive is uh, people always bounce back from it. But I think stuff like this needs to be experienced at least once. So when it does happen, it's just not another news item that you can borrow from. It's it's real people, real lives affected. Hmm. I don't want to linger here too long. So I think it's kind of a little disrespectful to sit out there and take pictures. But I just wanted to kind of contrast what the world's going through and what. Nashville's been through. I guess you can't just plan for stuff like this. It just it just happens, and you deal with it, and then you move on best you can. I guess. It sure kind of puts your smaller qualms into perspective. You know, if you're sitting at home and you're thinking, "Oh, I'm so tired of being indoors. I want to." I'm tired of Netflix and I'm tired of eating the same warm food and I'm tired of waking up and drinking wine. I mean, seeing something like this kind of puts smaller complaints on a on a different scale, and you realize that there are always bigger issues. And things ain't always bad. There's always someone's got it worse, I suppose. Washington DC as you can see with the Washington Monument behind me this is the busiest city you have seen this whole time I think it's for obvious reasons but if you look around uh, we're at the White House now the White House is right over there uh, but just the cars and cars and cars lined up parking lots are full these are all obviously government buildings and this is really uh, the hub of the response to coronavirus and the U.S. So obviously it's busy. There's a pandemic going on. It's a huge national emergency. So that's why everybody should have work. And you hope they're doing the right thing. But uh, just trying to show you what it looks like around Washington. The National Mall is fairly empty. Just some joggers and stuff. But no tourists. Nothing's open. There's <clears throat> no uh, you know, tons of t big police presence. No one just walking around strolling. Uh, there's maybe two or three tourists that I saw. Like one family. But otherwise people jogging and making big banana curves around each other to stay six feet apart and they pass each other on the path. So here it is. This is where this is where we're finding solutions, one would hope.
the uh, Pulaski Skyway, heading into uh, heading into New York City. Uh, I've gone coast to coast now, and heading into the hot spot of the United States. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous about it, but uh, I'm trying to go in and be respectful, not get sick. But uh, wide open skyway heading into the city. the river here. You can see the New York skyline in the distance already. Still lit up. Probably the more unusual since everybody's staying in their apartments right now. The Empire State Building. I saw a video of it online. I saw pictures of it, but it's flashing red to signal that New York is in trouble. And uh, saying it live, <clears throat> saying it live, it's kind of, uh, it's pretty damn eerie. Got to New York finally. Did the whole uh, loop south uh, back into Nashville and back up to New York. Um, it's kind of crazy. It's really empty. I just parked. I just pulled into the Lincoln Tunnel and parked uh, to get some pictures and photos. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of creepy. It's just I don't know if it's because nobody's out or just because it's uh, like the the news and social media and friends. Are warning you not to go, and New York is the, the, the hot spot right now. Um, but it just feels kind of a little eerie to be here. Uh, there's like nobody on the streets, just like cops, and there's a couple people walking around, but um, there's like wind blowing. I think it's uh, <clears throat> I think it's weird. It's like because you hear so much stuff about how New York is the hot spot. It's like I feel like when I open the door and go outside, it's just going to be this like this mist or this humidity of coronavirus, you know, like you step outside and you have to hold your breath and run between buildings. You know, just the perception you get when they people start drilling in your head, like, careful, watch out for that. Um, oh, there's a couple of people walking their dogs. Okay, good. With masks on. Um, but I got my, I got this for my mouth. I got, uh, got my sweater and everything. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm it also feels a little disrespectful to be here and do this in New York. I don't know why, for some reason, this city makes it feel that way. <clears throat> uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drive around, film that, and then maybe shoot pictures through my windows so I'm not gonna leave my car uh, at all. I'm just gonna keep the car, I'm gonna turn my vents off. I don't know, it feels, um, feels kind of goofy saying that, but uh, uh, I'm gonna be safe about this one. Um, but I also feel like if I didn't come to New York, if I didn't shoot anything in New York, I've gone so far with this project already that it kind of is just a, a, a bookend or a tentpole for it before I go back to the West Coast. So I feel like I have to shoot something in New York, but I don't want to be disrespectful or dangerous about it. So, uh, it's so weird. Like I've been in really sketchy situations. I've been in like bad neighborhoods and everything else. And for some reason, um, this is kind of making my heart beat a little bit. Um, anyway, so thought I'd just share that because I feel like my first video in LA was like hey look what I'm doing and now I'm like you know, I'm in the belly of the beast so just sharing that all right so uh let's shoot some stuff and then exit the city before um before midnight it's like uh, nine o'clock right now all right <clears throat> good stuff
cops out tonight. Truckers and cops. I used to do this walk when I was living in staying in Hell's Kitchen for a couple months and I'd go down to uh, I guess Chelsea to go hang out. I used to walk down there. There's always all sorts of people out and it was it was fun. Sad, like I think of all those people I met in like bars and restaurants and stuff who were just, I don't know, who knows what everybody's doing, everybody's just kind of scattered in the wind, aren't they? I've never seen just no traffic in New York before. The garbage, essential services, of course. Looks like there's some uh, bodegas and stuff open. And, uh, here we go. Let's go see what Times Square is doing. I mean, a lot of stuff is still lit up. Like, it's <clears throat> the city's still lit. But you just don't see a lot of people walking around. And all the cars are all parked because everybody's. Uh, sheltering a place and whatnot, so that's why it looks busier than it is. But then, when you just take out the human element, the, the walking around, the, the person element, then that's that's what's frightening. That's what's eerie. It's like someone just sucked everybody off of Earth. Driving right down. Uh, this is Fifth. This is Fifth Avenue. I remember on Halloween being stuck in an Uber on this road and literally just telling the guy to drop me off. I'll walk because it was faster. And now we've got a straight shot all the way down. <clears throat> all the way down Manhattan. There's a few people out walking around, but. Alright, here we are at uh, Boston Common, uh, the heartbeat, the center of Boston, at least the downtown area. Uh, usually people walking around, mixing tourists and locals have been here before. It's a nice sunny day, now granted it is raining so it's cold out. So it's a you can't control that, but uh, yeah, Boston's kind of crazy.
Chicago. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's actually pretty crowded. Now it's Saturday, so it's probably, I've never really driven around Chicago. Just maybe just like normal Saturday traffic, but it's actually pretty busy. Even though there's signs everywhere that say, you know, flatten the curb and watch COVID-19. Chicago's one of the hot spots too, so I'm gonna be extra safe when I get out of the car. But I just wanna point out the difference in traffic in a place like Chicago versus like, you know, Atlanta was pretty low. Uh, so, I don't know if people, uh, these are all essential workers or if people are just in their cars like I am or, but there you go. All right, uh, we are here in Chicago. Uh, one of our last stops on this whirlwind. And uh, so I am preparing to go out. It's a little chilly, I've got the hat, I've got the, the mouth the mouth cover I change these every day I got a bunch in my bunch in my trunk the benefits of doing obstacle course races and getting a swag uh, and before I leave the car I always get a little bit of a little bit of hand spray on me there there we go so my hands nice and clean I'm gonna got my mouth cover on my hood <laughs> I don't know why I'm gonna dress like a thug uh, so that's what I do, and then I don't touch anything except my phone and the door, door handle. Uh, go out, get a couple of pictures, a couple of videos, and then come back in the car. Lickety split. Because uh, it's always it's always way more nerve wracking to go to like a, a hot spot in the news, like Chicago or, or New York. Like I was just in Cleveland, and I just got out of the car, and it's a beautiful day, and just walked around Cleveland. There's like nobody out there. Uh, but when you come to someplace like Chicago, where you're just like, oh, I think it's is it in the air. Which it is, so cover my mouth, clean, make sure uh, I don't touch anything, that way I don't get it, and also, if I do have it, I don't want to pass it to anybody else, so cover up, don't sneeze, don't cough, any of that good stuff, don't touch anything, so we are now in Chicago, uh, do some quick pictures and videos, and then, then get the hell out of the city and let them do their thing. Okay, here we go, I touched my ear, so that should be safe, but... So we are at Chicago's famous city river walk. It's a beautiful day, it's Saturday. And normally this place would be packed with boats going up and down the river. But as you can see, it's completely empty. All the boats at this rental house are covered up and uh, all the chairs and tables are put away. This place is almost always packed every time I come down here on a Saturday, drinking their food. So Chicago, the river walk shut down, the Millennium Park is shut down. You can't even get in the park. Chicago is one of the hot spots, so a lot of people are staying home. Tons of people walking by and taking pictures of uh, Trump's hotel behind me. Uh, where's Trump's hotel? It's hard to see it in the uh, oh, there it is. It says Trump right up on the thing there. Uh, anyway, this is surreal. There's there's a few amount of people. I'm mostly like every other else, joggers and a handful of uh, homeless. Uh, I'm gonna try to get out of here before dark because. Uh, I feel like places like this might be able to get, might be getting desperate, so. Uh... <clears throat> and here we go. This is Lincoln Park on a Saturday night in Chicago. One of the best drinking streets in Chicago. Usually packed. People walking up and down the streets. This is. Saturday night in Chicago during the pandemic. And you're not drinking in Chicago on a Saturday, that's where you don't see this. Hey, it's, it's been a bit, so uh, remember, do one thing every day that makes you happy, right? Right, so I think you probably need us now more than ever, so here's what I'm going to do. turned off the news. I know, there's a lot of news going on, but sometimes you can turn it off and it's nice and quiet. Up in there. And here we are at the Mall of America, parking lot of the Mall of America, biggest mall in North America, in Bloomington, Minnesota. As you can see, wide open parking lot. Well, there's my car. 
a taxi. There's another camera car in the distance. Ikea, a couple cops. Otherwise, this is pretty much it right here. The biggest mall of America. Or biggest mall in America. Absolutely shut down. And super empty on a beautiful afternoon. On a Sunday afternoon, no less. I imagine the whole thing is closed on the inside. The pandemic has shut down American consumerism. to Seattle, Washington, uh, and uh, in my car, safe and sound, boxed in. Just had lunch, lunch, peanut butter and peanut butter and peanut butter bread sandwiches. That's how I do my meals. I eat my breakfast and my lunch in my car, and then uh, for dinner I'll find some curbside local restaurant and buy enough for two days. So minimizing contact and uh, trying to be kind of healthy. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so that's how the meals are done, in case anybody's curious. And, uh, what the hell is that? I have no idea where I got that. Anyway, um, so in Seattle now, which is another hot spot, uh, and every time you go to a hot spot city, you know, when I went to Cleveland, it was kind of like, cool, it's kind of wide open, and just walk around in Cleveland, but Seattle's a uh, hot spot city, and you always get a little more nervous, so, uh, there are people walking around, there's somebody skateboarding down the street, so... Like most places, there's always a handful of people who just don't seem to get it. Uh, you know, I'm doing my thing and avoiding people, going to places where there aren't people, but I also got the, the mask. I know it's cloth, but it's what I got. I didn't realize masks were going to be a thing when I started this whole thing. And I don't want to go buy surgeon masks right now. That's not fair. Uh, I got my hand sanitizer on my seat next to me. I'm a little stuffed up. That's allergies. <laughs> Temperature is fine. So, uh, heading out to Seattle, a little tired, gonna knock out Seattle today, and then Portland, and then head back down the West Coast. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to mostly talk about how I eat, in case everybody's going like, where do you eat your stuff? So, there we go. If I buy something to eat at the gas station, I uh, wash my hands, and then go buy it, pay for it, and then wash my hands again, so... Here we are. Here we are in Seattle. I'm gonna go check out some places in Seattle and 
and get the hell out of here. This is farmer's market down here on Pike. Wow. It's crazy how empty it is. City Center Mall, uh, right in the middle of Seattle, usually popping, multiple floors, the mall. Weird, the mall still open, but it's like none of the stores are, so. Uh, that's what that mall looks like right there. In case you've ever played a video game where you get to skate around the mall like a Tony Hawk or something. Oh, this would be great for a skateboarding video game, wouldn't it? So, there you go. There is an empty mall in the middle of Seattle. Again, malls open, stores closed, closed, closed. famous fisherman's wharf as you can see it's uh, usually fresh fish crab usually pretty packed with uh, the catch of the day and fisherman's wharf absolutely quiet except for those two tourists wearing face mask nice work but pretty sad all the way around you know when there's an empty Applebee's, this shit's serious. And here is the other side of the hill. Going down. Ooh.
right, so here's the final video uh, that I'm doing right here for you. This is good. So if I talk directly to the video, that's what you're going to be hearing right there. That's good. Check one, two, one, two. This is to test the, uh, the volume of the video. How's the volume? All right, so, uh, so, oh, sorry, this creepy chair. All right, so uh, we are officially, officially done with the journey, with the documenting of MD America. I'm not gonna call it, I'm not gonna call it a documentary. Uh, I guess maybe it is by loose definition. Uh, anyway, we are done with it. It is uh, over 8,600 miles driven. Uh, 17 major cities, not including the multiple stops in between. All four corners of the United States, minus Miami and minus the middle part, Denver, Kansas City. Um, that's it. I ended up in Button Willow, California, in a beautiful hotel room. Uh, ironically enough, right by a major trucking thoroughfare, so there's trucks going back and forth, so it... It sounds busier than uh, it is, which is funny because this is empty America and there's also a family downstairs, so it's not very empty. Uh, hair's a little bit more scraggly, beard's a little bit longer, more bags under the eyes, probably aged a few years, but it's only three weeks. We are officially at the three week point right now. It took three weeks to do this whole thing. Uh, and what did we learn from all of this? I don't know. I guess you don't, you don't really necessarily have to learn anything, right? You could just watch this and be like, oh, that's interesting. That's what Times Square looks like, or Bourbon Street, or Fisherman's Wharf. And that's fine if you walk away with that. And you say, oh, that's interesting. That's what I set out to do. I set out to say, I wonder what would it look like. And I bet people would like to see that. So that's the original goal. There was no more plan than that. Not much more of an agenda. Winged a lot of it. And now that it's... Now that it's all over, uh, I get to process. Not technically process the, what I shot, but mentally. And I don't know, the trip was fascinating and enlightening and sad and maddening and nerve wracking and, and free and scary and there were moments of optimism and great moments of negativity uh, about the wider picture about what we're dealing with it's interesting to see the united states during a global pandemic and have just a few interactions but a lot of the very observational and i'd love to come out just saying hey it's gonna be all right, and I don't, know, I don't know if that's true, sadly. But I hope it is. I do. I am optimistic about that. Here's here's what we can take away from this. I'll end on a happier note. You never know when it's just gonna end, right? Uh, uh, that doesn't sound happy, but hold on. <laughs> you never know when it's all gonna end. So, so just do it. Just do it, do it, do it, whatever it is, whatever it is, whether it's a project, whether it's a relationship, whether it's an idea, whether it's a notion, whether it's something you've been meaning to do, just to do it. You know, I, I've always wanted to drive LA to New York. I always wanted to just drive around the country and this became that impetus to do it and it's done. So, just do it. You you can do that. Might as well do it now. This journey is over. And I can't wait for the next one.
So I can't wait for your next one either. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was fascinating for you. I hope it was exciting for you. I hope you got to see America through a different point of view. I was happy to do it for you. I hope you all are safe. I was happy to do this safely for you. Stupidly, stupidly, but I will take that because I hope you are safe and getting through this. And there is going to be a tomorrow, but don't wait for that. I think that's good. Oh. But there is going to be a tomorrow, so don't wait for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good take. To the New York Island, on the Redwood Forest, to the Gulf Stream waters. This land's made for you and me. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island, on the Redwood Forest, to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. This land was made for you and me. This land was made for you and me.